Hey guys, for lesson two, we're going to be talking about Newton's three laws. Um, Newton's three laws all have to do with force and the motion of objects. Newton's first law is the law of inertia. And inertia is just the laziness of objects in the universe. So everything in the universe is really lazy. Newton's second law has to do with the application of force and how things speed up or slow down. So in order to get some mass to accelerate, you need to add some force. And this is just the equation and the way that objects behave when certain forces act on them. The, the heavier the object, the more force you need to get the same acceleration, and vice versa. And we'll play with that a little bit more in a couple of lessons. The last of Newton's laws, I think it's probably his most famous law, it's every, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And again, these all have to do with force. This is saying that for everything that you push, that thing pushes back against you. Like um, if I were to, like in boxing or something like that, or in, in football, if somebody really tackles someone really hard, then it actually hits them just as hard. So Newton's third law, I think, is probably his most famous law. Today, we're going to concentrate on Newton's first law, the law of inertia, or the law of laziness. What do I mean by laziness? What I really mean is that it takes some force to change the motion of an object. Meaning that objects that are at rest tend to stay at rest. It actually requires some motion, some force, to actually change this object. So here we have a tennis ball that is sitting at rest. If nothing from the outside actually interacts with this tennis ball, it will stay there forever. So, the first part of Newton's first law is that objects at rest tend to stay at rest. And don't let this tend fool you, they do stay at rest. If this were, if nothing were to happen to this ball, it would stay here until the end of times, forever. So I have to do something in order to, to move that object. The second part of the law is a little bit more confusing because it has to do with mo objects that are already moving. So a moving object we don't really think about as lazy, but it's not the actual motion we're talking about. It's a change in motion. So an object that's moving actually requires some force in order to stop. An object that's moving, like a tennis ball, actually requires some force to stop it from continuing to move. So if we had that tennis ball careening in towards my face, the reason why it hurts is because my face has to apply some force to that pet tennis ball to actually get it to stop moving. If we were in outer space and that tennis ball had missed me, that tennis ball would go on forever. There's nothing out there to stop that tennis ball from moving. So that's the laziness of objects that are in motion. So objects that are at rest tend to stay at rest, while objects in motion tends to stay in motion. Sometimes we get confused when we talk about this second law because, or I'm sorry, the, the second part of this first law, because here on Earth, things stop moving. If I were to slide into second base, I would eventually stop. But secretly, there's a force acting on me, and that's friction. I mean, I think that most of you guys could come to that conclusion on your own. But what about an object moving through the air? Well, there's air molecules in the air, and those air molecules need to be pushed aside to allow that object to move through. And that pushing aside comes with an equal and opposite force. 
So the ball moves through the air, and the air is pushing on it constantly, and it slows it down to an eventual stop. That's Newton's 